Good evening, everyone. Tonight we're going to be talking about an introduction to triangles. There are many ways to classify triangles. We're going to start off by classifying based on sides. First, we have a scalene triangle. Scalene triangles have no congruent sides, so you'll see them marked with a different number of tick marks on each side because none of the sides are congruent to each other. Next, we have isosceles triangles. Isosceles triangles have at least two congruent sides, so you'll see two sides with the same number of tick marks, and then possibly a third side with a different number of tick marks. So my left and right sides are congruent, but my base, in this case, is not. And then lastly, we have equilateral triangles. Equilateral triangles have three congruent sides, so this side is congruent to this side is congruent to this side. So all three sides have the same number of tick marks. Next, we are going to classify based on angles. So first we have acute triangles. Acute triangles have three acute angles. So we don't know anything about their relation to each other, like some could be congruent and some not, but they are for sure all acute angles, so they are all between 0 and 90 degrees. Next, we have right triangles. Right triangles have one right angle, so you'll see in the corner the little tiny square that represents right angle. And then we have obtuse triangles. Obtuse triangles only have one obtuse angle. So in this case, this is my one obtuse angle. And then lastly, we have an equiangular triangle, which is a triangle that has three congruent angles. So all three angles in this triangle have to be equal to each other. They are congruent. Next, we are going to discuss location of angles. So first, we have interior angles. Those are angles inside the triangle. So these three angles though not necessarily congruent like I've drawn here, but these three angles are my interior angles, while my exterior angles are angles between the side of the triangle and the extended side. So here, these two would be exterior, these two would be exterior, and then these two would be exterior. Most commonly, you'll see a picture like this where there's only one side that's extended, and then this is the exterior angle here between the side of the triangle and the extended side. Next up, we have the triangle sum theorem that says that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. So if I take the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C, it will always add up to equal 180 degrees. Next, we have the corollary to the triangle sum theorem. It says that in a right triangle, the sum of the two non-right angles is 90 degrees. So if you think about this, this kind of makes sense because we know we have 180 degrees in the triangle. If we've already spent 90 of our degrees on that right angle, well then obviously the two leftover angles have to add up to 90 as well, so the whole thing would be 180. So this means that in any right triangle, the two non-right angles, in this case E and F, are always going to add up to equal 90 degrees. Let's try an example problem. So we're going to find the measure of angle J and the measure of angle L. So here we have a right triangle, and like we just talked about, there are 180 degrees in a triangle. And then specifically since it's right, we know we've already spent 90 degrees on that right angle, angle K. So that means that our two leftover angles, angle J and angle L, have to add up to 90 degrees together. So I can write my equation, x plus 2x equals 90 degrees. I'm going to combine my like terms, so 3x equals 90. After I divide both sides by 3, I find that x equals 30. Now this is not my answer because the question asks me to find the measure of angle J and the measure of angle L. So I just plug back in. Since the measure of angle J equals x, then that is 30 degrees, and then the measure of angle L equals 2x, then angle L is 60 degrees. Now let's talk about the exterior angle theorem. The exterior angle theorem says that the measure of the exterior angle is equal to the sum of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So what this is saying is here in our picture, angle 1, being my exterior angle, is equal to the, two, the sum of the two angles it's not touching. So that will be A and B. So the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B equals the measure of angle 1. Let's try an example with the exterior angle theorem. So here, they give us a triangle, and they would like us to find the measure of angle JKM. So JKM is my exterior angle here, and we know by exterior angle theorem that, that 2x minus 5 is going to be equal to the sum of my non-adjacent angles x and 70. 
So 2x minus 5 equals x plus 70. I need to subtract x from both sides. So then x minus 5 equals 70. Add 5 to both sides. So then you find that x equals 75. And again, this is not our answer because they asked us to find the measure of angle JKM, so I need to plug back in. So 2 times 75 minus 5. Then you find that the measure of angle JKM is 145 degrees. Here's another exterior angle problem, so please pause the video and see if you can solve this one on your own. So we see here that we have the exterior angle 5x minus 10, and that is going to be equal to the sum of my non-adjacent angles 3x and 40. So I write my equation 5x minus 10 equals 3x plus 40. I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides. So that gives me 2x minus 10 equals 40. Add 10 to both sides. So we get 2x equals 50. After I divide both sides by 2, I find that x is equal to 25. And again, back in the question, it says to find the measure of angle ACB. Well, we don't have an equation for the measure of ACB, but we do have the equation for ACD, which forms a linear pair, it forms a line with angle ACB. So all we need to do is find ACD and then subtract from 180, and that will give us ACB. So I plug into my equation and find that the measure of angle ACD is 115, 5 times 25 minus 10. And then 180 minus 115 equals 65. So the measure of angle ACB equals 65 degrees. Now here is another exterior angle problem for you to try on your own. So you're finding the measure of angle FIH. And we will review this problem in class together. And that's everything I have for you tonight. See you in class.